Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. Police are again searching the Chambers flat home of the Foster family at the centre of the Tiali Palmer murder case. The foster father, Rick Thorburn, is charged with the murder. This afternoon, he was transferred to the Princess Alexandra Hospital secure ward. Police arrived at the Thorburn family home at about 7.30 this morning. Five forensic units searched the property, blacking out windows, some armed with shovels. Police took a number of items away for further examination, including a belt. The state government is conducting an investigation of its own into the state's foster care system. Blue cards, uh, foster caring arrangements, these have been additional uh, pieces that we've asked the Commissioner to look at as part of the review which will come back in the early part of next year. The acting Premier says the death of Tiali has impacted all Queenslanders. The foster father, his wife and two sons are all facing charges. Earlier this afternoon, Rick Thorburn was reportedly awake and responsive after being placed in an induced coma. Police have launched an internal investigation into whether he did take pills while in their custody. Rick Thorburn will be transferred to a correctional facility when discharged from hospital. He's due to appear in court in December. The arrests come almost 11 months after the Logan schoolgirl's body was found on the banks of the Pimpama River. Grace Cadden, QUT News. Tragedy in Cairns this morning. A 29-year-old woman has died after her jet ski collided with a reef boat moored at the marina. The Japanese tourist was riding with an instructor at around 9.15 when she hit the catamaran. Her partner, who was riding a separate jet ski, witnessed the accident. The woman was pulled from the water and efforts were made to revive her, but she was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigations are continuing. The use of a mobile imaging system during surgery has put the Green Slopes private hospital on the map. The operation was a first for Australia. In high-risk procedures to remove tumours from the brain, every millimetre counts. But Brisbane mother Clarissa Herbert breathed a little easier after her surgery on Sunday. I think my biggest worry has been who's going to look after my son. The operation at Green Slopes Private Hospital is the first time a mobile imaging system has been used during surgery in the Asia Pacific. During the five hour surgery, the scans help to precisely locate the two tumours. The technology works by lighting up the tumours, allowing accurate and safer results. And effectively see whether we still have more tumour to remove. Surgeons also believe the technology will have the potential to help in other surgical areas. Experts say this could mean a clear vision for safer spinal surgery procedures. Imaging Cars, QUT News. The upcoming summer thoroughbred racing carnival should be the best yet. It promises to offer much more than just racing. Running home as Moshe Kester on the outside, but it's all capital. It's all a big lead up to this, Australia's richest horse race, the Magic Millions next January. And Racing Minister Grace Grace and Racing Queensland CEO Dr Elliot Forbes are excited. There's lots on offer, more prize money, exciting races, and I can't wait for it to come about. The carnival features $13 million in prize money over four major lead-up race days. We have a bold new vision for the industry. The carnival is just one part of this vision. I look forward to further positive announcements during the rest of the calendar year about the carnival and the industry. Elliot Forbes says the state's peak racing body is showing great form. The facilities at Eagle Farm Racecourse have recently undergone a $5 million transformation. The jockeys, horses and fields are ready. Now all that's left is the fashion. Brisbane milliner Bronwyn Smith says she is excited for this year's races, with her clients embracing more traditional hair accessories. The spring racing carnival, in my opinion, will be all floral and happy, feminine and glamorous. Women are going back to the glamour days of, you know, just being very feminine. All for the fillies. Amity Bailey, QUT News. This Saturday, Brisbane's night sky will light up in a fireworks extravaganza as part of River Fire. Today, Army helicopters went through their paces in low-level flybys across the city. Preparations for River Fire 2016 have begun with a bus. 
as four choppers rehearsed this afternoon. The Army's Tigers and Taipans made their way over from Oki to the Brisbane River. You can catch them again on Saturday at 3.30 and 5.30 p.m. As Brisbane awaits the upcoming Sky Spectacular, behind the scenes, work is firing. From six months of groundwork on logistics to the actual construction, the 25-person crew at Foti Fireworks are nearing showtime. And they don't call them pyrotechnics for nothing. Safety is a must. On these six barges alone, there's 21,000 explosives and over 13,000 metres of cable ready to go off with a bang this Saturday night. It's a mix of chemistry. Making fireworks, we, we probably use about 50 different chemicals um, just to make the different colours. That... And physics. So there's a, what we class as a pre-fire time uh, that allows the firework to reach its pinnacle before going off. It's a passion that's run in the Foti family for seven generations. The shape, colour and size are all designed to a T, throwing in music to entertain. It's very labour intensive, it's something that's passed down from generation to generation. Showtime is at 7pm. Madison Scott, QT News. The Sydney Swans have arrived in Melbourne ahead of their preliminary final tomorrow against Geelong. Meanwhile, a surprise selection could be on the cards for the Western Bulldogs as they gear up for their own prelim against the Giants on Saturday. After his season almost ended in tears with a suspected fractured collarbone, Ling John could be a surprise inclusion to face Greater Western Sydney. He trained with the Bulldogs at their closed session earlier today, coach Luke Beveridge not making any decisions yet. The Bulldogs have beaten both of last year's grand finalists, West Coast and Hawthorne, but they'll face an uphill battle after losing seven prelims since their last grand final in 1961. We definitely don't go back and, um, and throw it up like you just did. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's there and um, I think that's the exciting thing. The Giants have no such history but face an even greater challenge, their first final series. In the NRL, Cronulla coach Shane Flanagan has dismissed criticism from counterpart Ricky Stewart that they used wrestling tactics and were constantly offside in their shock win two weeks ago. I laughed my head off when I heard it. We didn't wrestle. I think he's called it scrap on the ground or something. So, um, yeah, as I said, all banter and that's a coach's tactics. And that's what he wants to do. Good luck to him. The Sharks take on the Cowboys tomorrow night while the Canberra Raiders face the Storm, embroiled in their own wrestling controversy, on Saturday. Jed Thede, QUT News. Sydney Airport turned green and gold this morning as our Paralympic team landed back in Australia. As they came through a sea of supporters, the athletes and their 81 medals were all smiles. But no one was happier than 17-year-old Madison Elliott. Five medals, three of them gold. Months have been up and down for me, so to be able to go over there just to do my best and come away with these many medals, I'm really happy and stoked. Australia won 22 gold medals, finishing in fifth place. We all know birthdays come along once a year, but today one Brisbane lady blew out the candles on her cake for the 105th time. This room at St Vincent's Aged Care at Kangaroo Point was packed with friends and loved ones, all for Margarita Vatanza. Nine agree, nine. Great grandchildren. Sick as a boy, yeah, three girls. Yeah, the little one will be four years each, soon. This one will be four years, and that one will be four years next month. On her 105th celebration, family means everything. She's amazing. She's always happy. Despite her age, Vitanza makes sure she stays in great shape, physically and mentally. She came to Australia from Italy in 1937 as a single woman, moving to Innisfil, where she met her husband. It was a pretty rough life, to be truthful with you. No electricity, no, no um, fridges, no nothing. At 105, Margarita Vitanza says the secret to a long life is hard work and staying away from chocolate. Happy birthday from QT. Noor Gilani, QT News. Time now for a look at the weather. 
There were sunny conditions across the southeast today with gusty winds up to 30 knots. Brisbane climbed to 24, but both the Gold Coast and Ipswich dropped to 12 overnight. And the sunny coast reached 26. Around the nation tomorrow, Sydney will climb to 22, a top of 18 for Melbourne. Adelaide will drop down to 6 overnight and Darwin sunny and 33 degrees. Back to Queensland, there are flood watches in place for southwestern parts of the state, but elsewhere conditions will be sunny. 29 the top for Cairns, 28 for Mackay and Rocky, while Longreach will drop to 8 degrees overnight. Finally, the outlook for Brisbane over the next three days. There will be plenty of sunshine with top temps in the high 20s. And the Bureau is predicting clear conditions for river fire on Saturday. And that brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for you now. We're back tomorrow with more QUT News. Goodbye. Goodbye.